Ever seen that sparkling blue gemstone that looks like it was taken straight out of a fairy tale? That's aquamarine. But guess what? This gem didn't just pop up out of a Disney movie. It took millions of years, a lot of heat, and the right blend of minerals to produce that stunning blue-green color. So how does the formation process take place? And why do some aquamarines look blue while others appear green? Well, there's only one way to find out. But first, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's talk about how aquamarine is made. And no, it's not whipped up in some magical underwater cave by mermaids. This gem actually takes millions of years to form. That's right, while you've been busy growing up, going to school, and binge-watching TV shows, aquamarine has been slowly forming deep beneath the Earth's surface, completely unbothered by human existence. So, how does it happen? Well, aquamarine is actually a type of mineral called beryl, and it forms in a very specific kind of rock called granite pegmatite. Now, if that sounds like something out of a science textbook, let me break it down for you. Pegmatites are basically nature's slow cookers. They're these massive rock formations that form when magma slowly cools down underground. And when I say slow, I mean slower than a sloth running a marathon. This slow cooling process is what allows large crystals to grow. And if the conditions are just right, boom, aquamarine starts to take shape. But hold on, because it's not done yet. It still needs a special mix of ingredients to come together. Think of it like baking a cake. You need flour, sugar, eggs, and a lot of patience. In this case, the main ingredients are beryllium, aluminum, silicon, and oxygen. But the magic happens when iron sneaks into the mix. You see, without iron, beryl would just be a boring, colorless crystal. But when iron gets involved, it tints the gem with that gorgeous blue-green color we all love. In fact, the more iron present, the deeper the color. Now, once these crystals have formed, they don't just stay buried forever. Over time, natural processes like erosion and tectonic activity push them closer to the surface. Imagine the Earth slowly shaking them loose and delivering them right into the hands of lucky miners. And that, my friend, is how aquamarine is born. From fiery magma to cool, sparkling gemstone, with just a few million years in between. All right, so we know how aquamarine forms, but where on earth do we actually find it? Well, if you're hoping to stumble across a big chunk of it in your backyard, I've got some bad news for you. This gem doesn't just show up anywhere. It has a few favorite formation spots around the globe, and trust me, they're all way cooler than your average rock collection. First up is Brazil. I mean, if aquamarine had a homeland, this would be it. Brazil is like the VIP section for this gemstone producing some of the biggest and most stunning specimens ever found. The mines here churn out aquamarines in every shade of blue, from the lightest sky blue to deep ocean-like hues. Now, here's a fun fact. The largest aquamarine ever discovered, yes, the big boss of all aquamarines, was found in Brazil. It was over 100 pounds of pure gemstone magic. But Brazil isn't the only place bustling with aquamarine. Over in Africa, countries like Nigeria, Madagascar, and Zambia are also rich in this beautiful blue mineral. Nigerian aquamarines tend to have a greenish tint, giving them a unique character. Meanwhile, Madagascar's aquamarines are often super clear and bright, making them highly prized by collectors. And Zambia? Well, let's just say their aquamarines could make even the most experienced jewelers do a double take. Zambian aquamarines are deep blue and flawless. They're the kind you see in high-end jewelry stores with a price tag that makes your wallet cry. Now, let's travel over to Pakistan, where aquamarine is found high up in the mountains. We're talking about the Karakoram Range, which isn't exactly the easiest place to go gemstone hunting. Imagine climbing steep, rocky cliffs just to get your hands on a few pieces of aquamarine. That's some serious dedication. But it's totally worth it, because Pakistani aquamarines are known for their bright blue color and impressive clarity. Other places like Russia, India, and even the United States, specifically Colorado, also have aquamarine deposits, but they don't produce nearly as much as the big players. So, if you ever find yourself in one of these aquamarine hotspots, keep your eyes peeled. You never know, you might just find a gem worth a fortune, or at the very least, a cool rock to show off to your friends. All right, so you want to know how to get aquamarine out of the ground? Well, it's not as simple as walking into a cave and picking up a handful of shiny blue gems like a pirate finding treasure. Instead, it involves a whole lot of digging, some serious machinery, and a fair bit of patience. There are two main ways to mine aquamarine. These include open pit mining and underground mining. 
Both sound exciting, but trust me, they each come with their own challenges. Let's start with open pit mining. Picture a giant hole in the ground. Now make it bigger. No, even bigger. That's an open pit mine. This method is used when aquamarine deposits are relatively close to the surface. Miners start by stripping away layers of dirt and rock using a process called overburden removal. This is basically the mining version of clearing off your desk before getting to the real work. Bulldozers, excavators, and dump trucks are used to haul away all the useless stuff sitting on top of the gemstones. Once they get deep enough, miners start extracting the aquamarine bearing rocks, usually with explosives, as it's the quickest possible means. Now, if the aquamarine is hiding way down below, miners have to go further with underground mining. This is a bit trickier because, well, tunnels can collapse, oxygen isn't always great underground, and it's dark. So, miners dig shafts straight down or at an angle, creating a maze of underground passageways to get to the gems. They use drills, explosives, and sometimes even good old-fashioned pickaxes to break apart the rock and pull out the aquamarine crystals. It's kind of like playing a real-life game of Minecraft, except instead of worrying about pixelated creepers, miners have to deal with actual rock falls and the occasional poisonous gas pocket. Then, after the rocks containing aquamarine are pulled out, they get hauled to the surface for the next step in their glamorous journey. But before we move on, let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer effort it takes to get these sparkly blue gems. Next time you see an aquamarine necklace, just remember that a group of hardworking miners had to blast through solid rock and crawl through a tunnel to get that gem. So you think the hard part is over once the aquamarine is yanked out of the earth? Well, not even close, because now comes the real deal, and that's turning those rough, unpolished stones into the dazzling, sparkling gemstones people are willing to drop serious cash on. This transformation involves a lot of steps, a lot of skill, and a whole lot of patience. This stage is called gem processing, where science meets artistry. So when aquamarine is freshly mined, it's usually stuck inside chunks of rock. And unless you're planning on wearing a 10-pound rock on a chain around your neck, something needs to be done about that. The rocks go through a series of crushers, which break them down into smaller and smaller pieces. This step is all about precision. Too much force, and you end up with a pile of aquamarine dust. Too little. And you're left with a giant rock that still needs breaking. It's a fine balance, and only experienced miners know just how to hit it right. Once the aquamarine crystals are freed from their rocky prisons, they go through sorting, as not all aquamarine is created equal. Some pieces have that perfect ocean blue color, while others are cloudy, greenish, or have visible cracks. The best quality gems get set aside for high-end jewelry, while the not-so-pretty ones may be used for smaller stones, decorative pieces, or even crushed into mineral powder. Yes, even gemstones have a beauty ranking system. Harsh, right? Now comes the part where the real artistry begins, which is cutting and polishing. This is where lapidaries, the skilled craftspeople who cut and shape gemstones, work their magic. They carefully examine each crystal, deciding the best way to cut it to maximize brilliance and color. You see, aquamarine has a special property called pleochroism, which means it can look different shades of blue depending on the angle. A good gem cutter knows exactly how to position the stone to bring out the best color. It's kind of like knowing how to take the perfect selfie, except with way more science and expensive equipment. After the stone is cut into its desired shape, it goes through a series of polishing steps using finer and finer abrasives until it shines like a dream. This is the moment when the once rough, dull stone transforms into the sparkling, luxurious gem we all know and love. Finally, the finished aquamarine is ready to be set into jewelry, where it will live out the rest of its days making someone look extra fancy. So yes, mining aquamarine is a tough job, but turning it into a sparkling gemstone is an art. And the next time you see a gorgeous aquamarine ring, you'll know just how much work went into making it look that good. Okay, you want to look fancy without trying too hard? Well, aquamarine is there for you, because this gem isn't just pretty, it's effortlessly cool. You'll find it in rings that make your fingers look extra elegant, necklaces that scream, I have good taste, earrings that sparkle just right, and bracelets that tie it all together. It's also durable enough for everyday wear, and it's classy enough to make an impression at weddings, parties, or just flexing at the grocery store. Basically, if you want jewelry that's both stunning and low maintenance, aquamarine is the MVP. But to keep aquamarine jewelry looking its best, it's important to take proper care of it. Even though aquamarine is a durable gemstone, it can still get scratched or damaged. 
to clean it, you can use warm soapy water and a soft brush. It's also a good idea to store aquamarine jewelry separately from other pieces to prevent scratches. Now, I'm sure you're wondering if there are synthetic aquamarines. Well, the answer is yes, there are synthetic or lab-created aquamarines. Scientists have developed methods to grow aquamarine crystals in laboratories, mimicking the natural processes. One notable company, Tyrus, has been successful in creating synthetic aquamarines that closely resemble natural ones. Now, here's an exciting tidbit. Remember the world's largest aquamarine I told you about earlier that was found in Brazil? Well, it has a name, Dom Pedro to be specific. This massive gemstone weighs an astonishing 10,363 carats. Today, it's displayed at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. As you can see, Aquamarine's journey from deep within the Earth to the sparkling jewelry we cherish is truly remarkable. From its formation over millions of years to the skilled hands that mine and craft it, each step adds to the gemstone's allure. So, which shade of Aquamarine is your favorite? Blue or green? Head to the comments and let us know your thoughts. And if you would like to learn more about how gems are formed or how things are made from start to finish, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one.